episode of Pro Tips. Today I'm going to break down exactly how to do the perfect carb for you guys. We're going to use an example of Ethan Ewing, who arguably has the best carb in the game, and then break down one of my carbs and show you a few things I'm doing wrong. As you can see, I have a nice ergonomic setup here. There's four parts to the carb that we're going to break down so you kind of have the starting point at the bottom turn, which is step number one, pre-carb step number two, the carb, step number three, and end point of the carb. So there's four steps, we're gonna break it all down. Check out the video to learn exactly how to do the perfect carb. Okay, so first thing with the carb, we're gonna start with step number one, which is the bottom turn. The first thing you wanna do on your bottom turn is look to where you wanna go. Where your eyes go, you're naturally your body is going to follow. Then we want the trailing hand to be touching the water chest is gonna be as close to the water as possible and you want to bend your knees in a springy like position at about a 90 degree angle so ethan is keeping his knees bent at a nice angle the more your knees are bent the more power you're ultimately going to have out of the lip so it's super important to keep yourself nice and springy um, and bent as you come off the bottom Still eyeing off the section where your eyes go, your body goes, and ultimately your board is gonna go. And so we wanna hit that perfect part of the wave to get the perfect carve. As Ethan kind of comes up here, you're gonna see his back arm extend. And that's kind of, he's using his back arm here as kind of a wind up mechanism. His front arm is gonna stay nice and relaxed and kind of just loosely guiding where he wants to go and his surfboard. And so now we're going to transition from that bottom turn into the second phase of your carve, which we're going to call the pre-carve phase. You want to keep your knees kind of loosely bent here. As you can see, Ethan, he's still got that bend in his knees, but he's not as coiled up as he was on the bottom turn. As you get about three quarters up the face of the wave, you want to start to focus on the path of your carve. So as you can see here, he's kind of starting to turn his eyes and head down on the wave to see exactly where he's gonna come out of his carve. As you can see, his back arm is still kind of straight and coiled and that front arm is really nice and just loosely guiding. Now you can see he starts to put pressure on that back foot, which means he's gonna start to pivot the board in a second and ultimately come into that carve. As you can see at this point, Ethan's trailing arm is gonna rotate upward. So he's now lifting that back arm up and his front arm is still guiding down towards where he's gonna carve. This is now step three, which is the apex of the carve. His knees are bent, not as bent as he was when he was doing his bottom turn, but still nice and loosely bent. You can see his chest is starting now to open up and go towards where his eyesight was and ultimately his carve. And one of the things I like about this here is you want to pretend like you're holding a big fitness ball. That's going to help you keep your arms exactly where they want to be and guide your chest in the right direction. As you can see, Ethan's head is still looking to where he wants to go and his arms are still holding that fitness ball, that imaginary fitness ball. His knees are nice and bent and he's coming into the main power source of his car. You can see now his eyesight is looking down towards the bottom of the wave and his back leg and hips are starting to really explode and rotate through this car. Front arm and chest are still totally open and the hips are starting to follow where that head is looking and that front arm is going. As you can see here, something Ethan does really well is that he rotates his back knee in, kind of like a knobby knee style, which ultimately is gonna help him turn his back hip inward and utilize that main power source he has of his hips through the carve. His front arm is still guiding and now his head is looking directly down to where he's gonna wanna finish up his carve. As you can see here, he touches with his front arm to kind of use as a pivot point, and his back arm is at a nice 90 degree angle, and he's using 100% of his hips and legs to come through this carve as the main point of power. Still holding his imaginary fitness ball, it's a really good one to keep in mind as you're doing this. You kind of want to keep your arms in that position the entire time through the main apex part of your carve, and he's really driving with his hips, particularly his back hip and back leg. That's his main power source through the carve, which is going to make it look and feel really, really explosive. He's now eyeing off that really bottom part of the wave, 
He's opened up his shoulders. He's still holding his fitness ball here. Knees are slightly flexed, but not too straight, also not too bent. He's really just enjoying the carve at this point and um, coming out of it with a lot of power and a lot of speed. Now, as Ethan comes out of the main apex part of the carve, he's gonna shift his gaze towards the bottom of the wave to where he's gonna want to ultimately re-pivot his board in that direction. His arms are nice and open. He's really driving off that back foot. And this puts him towards now what we're gonna call a step four, the end part of the carve. So as you can see, Ethan has now changed where he is looking and gazing over his shoulder and back down the line of the wave. That is gonna help him transition really nicely here. He's gonna finish up his car about halfway down the wave, not at the very bottom. Because if you finish at the very bottom, you're more likely to lose all of your speed. If you finish kind of where he does, halfway up on the wave, you're gonna keep your speed flowing into your next bottom turn and next maneuver. As you can see too, his knees are nice and fully flexed at this point. He's coiled up and ready to go into that very next bottom turn and whatever maneuver choice he has in mind. So as Ethan finishes up his carve here, again, he's looking now exactly where he wants to go, which will be directly into the next bottom turn. And it's really important to finish up that carve about three quarters to halfway up the wave so you're not losing all of your speed. As you can see, he's already eyeing off his next section and he goes into a really nice maneuver. Okay, so now we're gonna go into one of my carves. We're gonna start again with step one, the bottom turn. As you can see here, my eyes are looking to where I want to explode off the lip, which is good. My knees are bent but not fully bent, not as bent as you would have noticed Ethan was, which is something I really need to work on. Therefore, you can see that my chest is not quite as close to the water or the wave as Ethan's was. So if I bend my knees a little bit more, ultimately I should be able to get my chest closer to the water, which is what I want. My hand positioning here is pretty good. I'm placing it kind of at that very bottom part of the wave, and it's gonna help me pivot off my rail here, off the bottom turn to go to where I'm looking. Something to notice here is you can see I have less rail engaged at this part in my bottom turn than Ethan did. That is because I'm not as coiled as him and I have too much pressure on my back fins. So you can see my nose is sticking more out of the water and my rail is just less engaged. That's something I want to clean up and need to work on. The more rail you have engaged, ultimately the more control you're going to have. That's why you want more of that. As I come around here, once again, I have the same thing with my back arm. I have it nice and coiled up and it's ready to explode through the car. My front arm is leading and in a relaxed position, which is good. I should have a little bit more knee bend coming through this part of the carve and I'm working on that, but this is really great to break it down so I can see. Uh, as we come into this next phase of our maneuver, we're gonna call it the pre-carve. So let's break this down. As we come out of our bottom turn and start our pre-carve about three quarters up the wave, you can see my chest start to open. I have my back arm nice and bent and my leading arm is kind of relaxed. My chest is starting to open up. My eyes are still looking at the top of the wave where I want to hit it and start my main part of the carve. My head, however, is kind of starting to look down already to where I'm gonna end my carve. I'm gonna explode out of this part and I should kind of get like a weightless type of feeling as we come into our main part of the car. So as we come into the main part of the car, my arms are a little bit in the wrong positioning here. You can see I've dropped my fitness ball. My back arm should actually be rotating a little bit more in the direction of the actual carve and where I'm gonna be turning into. It's still straight up and you see I'll shift it in a minute, but it's a little bit late to the party. My eyes are starting to look down to where I want to go. And as I come through this part of the wave and the top part of my carve, you can see my front leg is really straight and locked out and my back leg is bent, which is where I'm getting all of my power from. A lot of the carve's power is gonna come from your back hip and back leg. That's just how it is and something to know. So I'm gonna use my back leg to really push against my stomp pad and start to rotate my hip internally, which is gonna help me through this second half of my carve. My chest is nice and straight up. Ideally, my 
arms would be holding that fitness ball a little bit better. They're a little bit too spread wide here in my opinion. I have my back knee slightly internally rotated, not quite as much as Ethan's, so that's something for me to work on, which I think would give me more power if I can internally rotate that a little bit more. It's gonna give me more explosion out of my hips. But it is a little bit in that knobby knee position. You can see my arms are in a nice position now and I'm looking at the end point of my carve, which is gonna be the last part of this carve. As I'm finishing up this main part of the carve, you can see my eyes are looking down to where I wanna go, but quickly transitioning is my head and my eyesight. I now turn my gaze towards where I want to start my next bottom turn and I'm gonna open up my chest so it's gonna finish up my carve and I don't just keep going towards the bottom of the wave. Remember finishing your carve about halfway up the face of the wave is gonna really help you to keep your speed and transition so you can come into that next bottom turn with all the speed, power, and flow that you want. So you really wanna turn your gaze as quickly as possible so you're looking exactly where you wanna go and can hit that next maneuver perfectly. Okay, so thank you so much for watching you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have any questions about it or aren't sure about something, please leave a comment below and I promise I will get back to you. Or if there's something that you want to learn or see, also leave a comment and I'd love to make a video about it for you on pro tips. Um, if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. It really helps us out so we can keep making these videos for you guys every single Thursday. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week.